let me bring this into the Neo Adjuvant settings. It's a really important point. So let me give you a case. It happened to me yesterday, actually. She came to the clinic to see me uh, before I flew out here last night. A um, woman walks in the door. She's 62. Uh, she has a 12 centimeter uh, ER positive, fairly positive, probably about uh, uh, the equivalent of 60%. We, do, we use semi quantitative. Uh, so, say equivalent of 60%, PR 60%, KI 67, 15%. Okay, grade two tumor, 12 centimeters, kind of touch, touching the chest wall. All right. So, how would you treat that patient? Would you give her chemo up front? This new how care? old was she? Yeah. 62. She's post Grade 2 ear positive. Grade 2 ear positive. KI is like 50%. And our KI is good. Our KI guys are good. KI we don't know if it's what? no negative, but KI is 15% on the low end. So I just saw a patient like that yesterday. So here we go. We have a lot of patients like this. So what do you give this woman? And I'll tell you, I won't tell you what I do, but would you give this woman endocrine therapy and a CDK4, or would you give her chemo? Up front. That's the decision I think we don't have approval for neoadjuvant. Right. Right. We don't, but one could years. argue it's unresectable disease. So, yes, we do have approval. It's so unresectable. This patient it's unresectable this disease, and you want to make it resectable. Do you send genomic tests in that setting? Not on, do? not in that. It's too early year. for me for genomic testing, which is a whole other conversation. Would you treat her? How would you treat her, Lee? So those are the uh, those are the problem <coughs> cases every time. So uh, I have so I have treated people. yes, and so. I don't think using CDKs, I haven't done it yet. Uh, I have used genomic tests in that setting, and there was actually a study at um, San Antonio that looked at Oncotype to help guide that decision. Oh, genomic testing means multiparametric or That's American what I Oncotype. Meant. Oh, yeah, I right. think you meant like I an NGS. Mean, no, 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 not NGS. Of, but see, we but, use that to decide so about chemo or let's not. So so she's, so she's low of risk. Spy. So if she's low risk, I would consider endocrine therapy there. But if I was going to start that patient on neoadjuvant endocrine therapy, I'd get a, K a repeat KI67 at two weeks. So you I'd would say, you would do that. I'm not I get it at one month. Well, Everybody. two to but four weeks, depending on when we can schedule the biopsy. So you would use that, even though it's kind of a for me, it's kind of a researchy kind of thing. I mean, you'd use I, that I, clinically, dropping KI67. I, 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 I don't. I think it's still on research. In this particular case, I would. Really? Yeah, not in an 80-year-old who yeah. is a bad surgical risk who I'm using neoadjuvant endocrine therapy all the time now. If I'm trying, trying to right. decide, but this is not. This is someone gonna, you normally give chemo to. Am I going to jump ship and give chemo in a patient like this? I would uh, look at KI67 if I could at four to six weeks, something like that. I, two weeks is a little bit earlier for us, but um, if I could. Now, you know, if you're going to go to surgery at four to six weeks, I don't need to do it. But right. if I'm going to try and keep them on that to try and shrink it, I would. If this patient has unresectable disease, I would add a CDK4-6 inhibitor. I mean, based on the poetic, if you, have, if you go from high to low, now if you're low to low, which is what your case Describe is. Describe poetic, though, for the audience. I need to know what that is. So well, that was, in my opinion, was a little audacious. They, uh, the <laughs> primary, and I'm not sure how it was designed, Designed, but uh, two weeks of, of time uh, to CDK4 uh, drop or something. <laughs> well, go ahead. Uh, say well, it was, the primary endpoint was actually a clinical endpoint, right. and uh, which I suspect had more to do with the funding authorities than the scientific design. But I don't know that. So two weeks of neo of uh, perioperative um, hormonal therapy with um, with an AI to see if there's a clinical change. But there were lots of uh, correlative sciences. And basically, if it just confirmed what we've known from all the other small trials. If you have high KS67 and you go low, you do well. If you have low, low, you do well. If you go low, high, you do poorly. And if you're high, high, you do poorly. 20% progress, disease uh, progression within five years. Okay. And Matt Ellis has shown this, you know, Matt Ellis and Cynthia Ma's work. I think, you know, Cynthia Ma's an ongoing trial with this. I actually think that there is a fair bit of data uh, that moves it a little bit outside of the research setting that suggests that people who don't drop their KI-67 don't do well, and that we believe that those patients may actually benefit from chemotherapy. So I think that if you're going to start with neoadjuvant endocrine therapy in a patient where, you know, the decisions are going to be close, right. that right. that might be helpful. So I actually do it in patients where I'm trying to make a decision. You know, somebody said to me, she has second cancer, she doesn't want chemo, you know, she has a low, high risk on mammoprint, you know, just yeah. above. And I said, okay, well, we'll do endocrine therapy, you know, KI67 is 20%, you know, we got to see what's going to happen at yeah. this first month. Yeah. So yeah. the caveats with KI67 and the reproducibility. Right. That's right? What's, I mean, you got to trust your KI67. Yes. So where I come from. You got to trust who you do it. Right. right. Where I come from, we don't report that. So I wouldn't know. And I it's wouldn't memorial. You don't trust your pathologist. So you shouldn't say that on TV. They do check two well, markers. You're going to be on television. You're going to be on television. You're going to say you don't trust your I pathologist. KI67 so. memorial. Many institutions, including ours, <laughs> does not use KI67 as a part of their pathology report to guide treatment for the various caveats that are known to everyone. Now, just out of curiosity, I, 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 I find all these data very intriguing and relevant in many ways, uh, as we're discussing. 
the cut points have always confused me. And so the poetic trial used 10%, the POL study has used 10%, there's data for 14% cut points, right. there's subgroup data analyses have looked at 20%. Right. How have you decided a baseline key 67 of 15% and how much of a decline makes you feel like you want to adapt there if you use it in clinic? Well, no, they say you have to decline below a certain number in all the well, trials, like below 4.7% really or yeah, what is that below number? below 5%. It's 5% roughly? Based on Neo-Monarch and all the Neo studies looking yeah. at CDK4-6 inhibitors, people used a complete cell cycle suppression, right? So, and of 2.7. Whatever that number is, I always forget what it is. So 2.7 or whatever it is. The, you know, it's an interesting question because that's a, that is a research question, okay? You know, you're looking at complete cell cycle suppression. I don't know that we but need I that. But I agree with Kamal. That but I think is, that, you know, it's not this so you guys, do you use it at, use it at NYU? <laughs> I think this is still a research is, it's question. It's a research question. And it's not, I, I, it's, I not uh, it's not validated. It's uh, I think it's very dangerous to go by a test that is unreliable. Don't try this at home. I have to admit, when I have reports of key 67, right. I kind of use that information some ways, but I don't know what if I rely on key 67 to make a decision. You're looking at change. That's but what the change I, is I don't care about the number. It's a different biopsy in different areas. Breast cancer is very heterogeneous, and I don't think you can, you're not biopsying the same Well, place. that's the point I was going to raise. So it's it, there are a lot of these technical. So, but these, these, the these, some of these ER positive cancers are not that heterogeneous. So if I see a patient like this. I think you like just this, have to be cautious and individualized. Yeah, but a patient like this, I, I would probably use chemotherapy I, to yeah. downstage and then use hormone therapy in an adjuvant setting. But, so, but having said that, I, and I, I agree that a combination of endocrine therapy and CDK4-6 may be as effective as, let's say, paclitaxel. We don't know for sure, but it seems like some patients actually can do very well. The other problem with uh, neoadjuvant endocrine therapy is the duration, because endocrine therapy, we know we give it for five years, 10 years, and three months may not be enough. You're no, using the K67 to t guide you, and that's where I have a, a, a problem with that. So Which is why PCR is not prognostic in the ER positive subtype the right. way it is for her yeah, to positive the or triple cyclic, negative. For example, in the Abema cyclic study Mona, Neo Monarch, the PCR rate was 3.7 percent. So, uh, and San Antonio. So again, it's uh, not the greatest. Uh, there was a chemo, but there's a NeoPal study that was presented at ESMO, which is a small trial, right. but compared chemo to, to Palbo and Right, that's AI. what I'm remembering when and I think about this. So you could either read that as it's very glass similar, half full or glass yeah. half empty. Right. The, We're on the college, it's always half full. Yeah, right, but chemo was, right. the, but here's the point to your patient. Patients got chemo. They still only had a, a 5% right. PCR rate exactly. with chemo, and yeah. they got the same amount with right. the That's combination. That's exactly when I thought and of this patient. I thought of Neopal. In exactly. that study that at higher. ESMO, the breast conservation rate was similar, yeah. which means you could get away with the endocrine therapy combination. That's the point. The it, response of these drugs is high. We said it in the metastatics. We're saying the neoadjuvant study. Having said that, I don't think this is a very clinically approved approach or an indication yet, but for a well, patient for to patient basis. Unresectable, unresectable, disease, unresectable disease, no, unresectable they would have been eligible, eligible for the first for the trial, line studies. So. Oh, yeah, true. it's in the label for that. I personally so would long? take that approach instead yeah. of chemo. How I would use, you when I give neoadjuvant endocrine therapy, if I'm really giving it and I'm not just giving it to decide about whether or not somebody should get chemo after surgery, which we do also, but you know, it's sort of an induction, you know, uh, using the more of Matt Ellis's, you know, uh, again, drop in proliferation. But uh, if I'm really giving it, I try and give it for six months, you know, because I think that that's where, for lobular cancer, there's really good data from the UK yeah. suggesting that you see really much better responses with they longer duration. They do it for duration. a year. They do it for yeah. a year. And I get a little I nervous. I did that for a year. I, mean, I, 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 did, I, I did think that American for a year. women will not want to go on hormone therapy. They're not taking the tumor for a year, a year, a I, year. I did it for a woman with unresectable disease with letrozole alone for a year with close observation with a surgeon, and she actually could make it to surgery. Right. She had I, I mean, I've done it in patients who are fragile, who are not good. We're not talking fragile. We're talking now regular patients. Are not right. good kinds for chemotherapy, and you can do it, do it for a long time. And, um, but I say, you know, I try and get people to surgery by around six months unless they really are continuing to have a great response. But some of these people, you just see phenomenal responses to endocrine therapy. And then, you know, you get the lobular cancer patients who've been on it for six months and they have 26 positive nodes, right. which you couldn't see by anything beforehand. But they would have so had those 26 nodes. They would have had them anyway. So, okay, now you know you need chemo. Right.